the PNT TV network, the Fem Queer Entertainment website. Well, thank you so much for um, sitting down for me you know, and giving me a few moments. It's Happy very, to. Yeah, PM, everybody at PNT is pretty excited. Um, Good. You want to just give everybody a, a background um, in terms of a little something about yourself? Sure. Um, I, let's see. Hmm. I started, I've always been a performer. I started out as an actress and I was really bad at it. Um, I had a, a dear friend of mine, Cecily Adams, who was a casting director and an actress and we had known each other for many years. And um, she said to me one day, she said, you know, Nancy Lee, you really suck at being an actress. <laughs> and, I, and I was in a place where I could hear that, so that was good. And she said, but the shit that you write for us is really great. And in that moment, that was my career path. I knew that, um, that that's the way I could express myself and that I had a lot of talented people around me who would elevate my words. So that was the turn that, that started me writing and putting me behind the camera. And I spent a lot of time in um, sitcoms when I first started mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then was able to jump to drama and write some other stories that were important to me. So I've been at it for about 20 plus years and I've had a, I've had a really lovely run. I feel very, very blessed to have been able to be involved in the shows that I was involved in. And I've made um, so many dear friends that are now family through the shows that I've worked on. It's, it's been incredible. So that's really enriched it for me. Oh, but I, I mean, I know some of you, you know, your background in terms of your career, but give us a... Uh, a show that you were involved with that may seem surprising to some of your you know followers or some of our viewers well let's see my um, uh, the very first network show that I wrote on was a show called Night Court and um, it ran for I think uh, eight seasons maybe seven or eight seasons uh -huh. and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to write the series finale on that show which yeah. was great wow. And, um, and that was lovely. And then I, um, one of the best shows uh, experiences and writing experience for me was on a show that probably most people uh, have not seen, but you can, you can search it on YouTube. Uh, it's, it was called The Powers That Be, and it was created by uh, Kaufman and Crane, who created Friends, and it was the show before Friends, and it was uh, through Norman Lear's company. And so I got to work with Norman Lear, and he soon became my mentor, which he has been forever, and it, it really changed my life in so many positive ways. And the group of writers that I and actors that I worked with on that show still remain friends to this day. And it was one of the best comedy casts in television at, at that time or any time. The cast had um, David Hyde Pierce in it, Peter McNichol, Holland Taylor, Valerie Mahaffey, Robin Bartlett, um, Joey Gordon-Levitt, Cloris Leachman. Yeah, it was crazy, amazing, hilarious show. Only ran two seasons. It was a political uh, comedy. Uh, John Forsythe was in it. It was just amazing. The experience was fantastic. And, and for uh, most of the season, I was the only female writer on staff. And um, what was glorious about Norman was that if he trusted you, he would trust you all the way. Mm -hmm. For instance, I could write, I could write a monologue or a, a series of jokes for somebody, and if he signed off on it, it would get sent down to the stage, and it would happen that fast. Um, usually, network television has a much longer process of many, many drafts and many, many notes and lots of people touching it, uh, networks and uh, notes every day before you finally see after the you know seven days on the floor and the three weeks writing it before you actually see it on your television so I was um, it, it spoiled me in a lot of ways because I've never found that again mm -hmm. <laughs> unless unless I'm running the show but um, that was really a great place for me to to uh, cut my teeth very early in my career and then uh, and then I got lucky enough to work with some other fabulous people along the way who um, yeah, uh, the South of Nowhere team was fantastic we had a great great time and uh, I had a lot of great writers on that on that show as well. 
and we were really under a lot of pressure to turn out a lot of great teen drama very quickly and I think we did a good job but it sure helped having that cast in front of the camera too so I yeah I've been very lucky I've been I've had great people behind the scenes and uh, and great people in front of the camera and I think that's the best combination you know you get it's all kismet it's a big roll of the dice and you never know if you're ever gonna see your show up on on the big screen or the little screen or or the computer screen but once it's there it really is a it's wild that it keeps happening I love it never get tired of it <laughs> well we'll get more to uh, uh, you know I'm sure to stick in some some um, a question about South of Nowhere but um, talking about the computer screen um, the Nikki and Nora has been uh, quite a fan favorite for a very long time since it's first yes. unauthorized introduction on YouTube and um, <laughs> true um, on the way to getting it to where it's at right now you've broken many a record um, yes. including garnering the largest funded campaign with Leslie Ben Leeds ever congratulations yes, I... on that thank you very exciting um, but how does it feel to have this kind of response to your project you know after this long oh gosh uh, uh, I have such gratitude um, to the fans for this because it really truly was born um, kind of behind my back you know <laughs> I mean, um, we uh, you know we we shot the show a network pilot and uh, you know the history of it and mm -hmm. the climate in this country was not quite right for a show like that now but um, you know with the blessing of Les Moonves and the other networks Don Ostroff they said you know um, make some DVDs and send it out there in the world and, and see if you can sell it well, we couldn't sell it, but as you know, it got leaked on the internet and then it became its own animal. And I did not know that for a long time because I wasn't paying attention. I was off doing, you know, when your project doesn't get picked up, you move to the next one. Yes. So um, uh, when um, Sarah Warren, who was running after Ellen at that time, approached me and she said, you know, I, um, what else do you have going on? You know, Nikki and Norris become a huge phenomenon on white. What? So, uh, so I started looking at some of the YouTube videos and the love letters and and realized that um, while our timing might not have been right for network television, um, it was clear to me that there was not enough uh, content, shows, anything out there um, for our community. Mm -hmm. And um, and I was not aware that the fanfic was happening either because um, I wasn't reading any of it. That's not what we do as writers. We're sort of not allowed to read it because um, you know not that this is going to happen but our attorneys will advise us that someday somebody might knock on your door and say that you know that TV show you came up with that's an idea that I wrote and I know that you read it and talked about it so I've been I never read any of it until um, uh, after Ellen and then um, uh, one of the fan fiction uh, shows Elaine who's a, a lovely guy Eric Cole, who approached me and said, would you like to do a forum on Nikki and Nora to your fanfic writers? And I was like, oh, okay. And that really surprised me. And then I, I met some really great uh, fanfic writers through um, conversations about Nikki and Nora, um, um, many of whom came uh, down to New Orleans and helped us with the shoot, which was great, and have become friends of mine. And also uh, very and helped very much in the publicity of the new web series version of it. So um, I, I guess I, I would have to say that in terms of you know the timing of it all, I still think that the popularity, the reason it's still popular, is because there still might not be enough space, airspace out there where people are seeing themselves. The reason the show was so popular, the reason it took off behind the scenes, is because people, lesbians in particular, were looking to see themselves somewhere on the landscape of media and not just as the next door neighbors and not just during sweeps, sweeps weeks where they put a couple of hot lesbians in a hot tub they were really looking for for stories that spoke to themselves whether it was economically emotionally family wise work wise and and i think with nikki and nora we hit on all of those um, you know we we hit on all those those points and also we got lucky enough that 10 years later now um, our couple is out and um, they're not closeted and they have a long history now and so people I think are really enjoying just um, seeing somebody that um, has a success story you know that they didn't break up yes. that they didn't 
that it wasn't a, a one night affair and that I, I think that's brought people along. Did I answer the question? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in terms, well, you, you, you didn't touch on one other reason was, was the fact that Christina Cox happens to be, has her own following because Huge. I mean it is beyond 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 um, right so basically there are people who would watch her full napkins um, right so to see her in another lesbian show movie series is mind-blowing um, yes, but why do, why do you be talking about the atmosphere of television and now we have series we have committed couples we have you know, with a vast variety of storylines, it's, it's gotten better, much better in the last two, three years, especially, where every yes. Sunday, not just for sweeps or not just for the male audience, but real earthy, you know, connected lesbian True. relationships and characters. Why, True. you know, why didn't you try to um, try again on television? That's one. Um, or do it as a movie. Why the Internet? Um, well, I, I, well, first of all, you know, television is a very long process. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. It's very difficult to get anything on network television, and um, and even though the landscape feels better and larger and wider now for um, gay and lesbian couples or gay and lesbian storylines, if you really sort of look at the networks, they're not dedicating all that much space to it. Okay. The stories which is great though, are being integrated into other stories and you are seeing, like you said, more of, of you know, a life. So um, there have been pitches and there's been development where I've tried to get other lesbian stories uh, on the air, but um, it was not to be. And the thing about um, the internet, which is so great, is you can create your own content. So the internet for me became a place where I could tell the stories that network television wouldn't let me tell or wasn't going to pay me to tell. <laughs> so um, that's why the internet. You know, when you think about how a pilot gets to television it's it's impossible you know each network buys hundreds of scripts they produce 20 to 30 um, pilots three on the air so you know your your odds of getting a show on the air is is like winning the lottery it's crazy um, so I am happy to see that there's more um, stories out there to be told and so the internet for me has been a place to be able to tell the stories that I couldn't get up on on, the, on network television and features is not my uh, my marketplace really. I uh, it takes a long time to also get a movie made. I did make a couple of movies back in the day that were mine again, but I didn't. Um, I liked the I like the speed of television. You know, you know pretty quickly if your project's going to happen or not, and that's um, that helps me and my uh, speed <laughs> of my life. <laughs> well. Um, I wanted to find out, you know, in, in, in realizing that you wanted to do this um, again and, and do it on the internet, was it yes. difficult or was it uh, uh, difficult or easy, according to which one, easy to get back Christina Cox and Liz Vassy and did you know for sure that if you were coming back that you had to go with them? Um, yes and yes. Uh, you know, we did a... The first web series that I did was a show called Three Way, which was a comedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Three Way, we spoofed um, Nikki and Nora with Liz and Christina playing lady cops. You I know, remember. we tried. To... Okay, good. So they were already, you know, they were my they're my dear friends. We never stopped being friends. Mm -hmm. uh, Ten years ago, this May, when we met uh, for Nikki and Nora, and uh, so when they when they came back and spoofed lady cops, we. You know, and we got such a giant fan reaction to it. We knew that if we could ever pull it off again, that if we built it, they would come. So that was a that was a given. Um, it was just about timing. You know, Liz and Christina are very popular actors. They're out working all the time. Um, so the the really the timing had to be perfect. So when the rights to Nikki and Nora came back to me, I was working with um, uh, Kristen at Tello Films and. By the way, they have been huge advocates for my work and let me do all of my um, passion projects. So it, I know, call girl up. Yeah, we are we are here because of them, which makes me very happy. Plus, they're internet um, web gurus, and um, I they're the ones that got all the publicity together, pulled all the helped the Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaigns for both of our projects, and and were amazing. Um, so what happened was when the rights came back to me, I went first to Liz and Christina, 
and said, if we can do a, a web series version of this, would you be interested? And they said, yes, you know, with conditions, timing, other projects, life, all that stuff. So um, we scheduled the shoot for last May. May is a good time during the television season to do independent projects where you want to get television actors who are usually involved in something else. Okay. Because May is the time when all the networks um, are deciding what their new shows are going to be. Um, it's called the upfronts, and if you're not going to New York to announce your new show, or I'm not, or you know you're not coming back to a show for a second season, this is the perfect time for you to grab actors. It's mostly when actors and writers go on vacation too, if they don't have a, <laughs> if they don't have a show. So uh, that was our schedule. Then we just, uh, and then I wrote a script, and um, Liz and Christina and my my partner and wife, my producing partner and wife, Paige Bernhardt. And I sat down and we all got the, pulled the script together in a way that we uh, all agreed that we liked. And, um, and Kristen started pulling together the uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo campaign for us. And uh, we wrote specifically to uh, actors that we knew we wanted to work with who were friends of ours, who would be willing to come to New Orleans for a new media contract and spend a week here with us and, uh, and work for little to no money to be a part of something. And we also made sure that we chose actors from varied fan bases, um, from sci-fi, from you know mystery, from the gay and lesbian community, from supernatural elements, from motion pictures. So we really had a, a diverse fan base coming with us based on our casting. Plus, we knew they were actors we could really count on. And then the rest just sort of, once that train leaves the station, you're just in it. And um, you know, seven days, uh, we shot a lot, and I think we did very, very well, considering that most network, you know, pilots have a lot more money and, and have a lot more time. You know, when you think about the original Nikki and Nora, we shot that in nine days for 1.9 million. And uh, we shot the new Nikki and Nora in seven days for uh, a tenth of that. So I think for what, what showed up and what happened, I'm very, very pleased with that project. Well, so. hey, hey, everybody else could agree with that. Um, since keeps. you answered one and a half more of my questions. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because um, with them to answer, although you didn't know the scheduling problem that you had with them, um, with the two lead actresses, and also the guest star, but what you, what, I want to find out more about the guest stars in terms of will there be a season two? Well, it depends on the availability. Um, we'd really, uh, we'd really love to have our series regulars come back, which would be Janina Gravenkar and and Jim Bieber, Tess Harper, and Armin Shimmerman, um, and Wally Langham. Those are our series regulars that we've set up, and we'd love to have them come back again. Obviously, it'll be based on availability, um, and as soon as we figure out what that time frame is going to be, we're hoping it'll be in the fall. We can um, we can reach out to them first and see if they can reserve some time for us and try to work around their schedules. But they're all wildly popular, always working actors. I'm, I'm hoping that they can, they can make it happen. So that's, you know, that's always based on them. Lo we'd love to have them back though, and yes, we will write to them if they'll come back. <laughs> I mean, uh, the first season consisted of seven episodes. Um, is this like a format, if you, ask, if you have thought about season two, is it a format that you know, will be continued Yes, um, we you know we wrote the script as an hour of network television and then divided it into seven um, episodes mm -hmm. or webisodes, mm -hmm. and we're cutting it back together as one full hour that we can use to sort of take out and shop to other outlets and and perhaps maybe get a little bit of a wider reach and a bigger budget next time around. Um, but that seems to be a good format for us. You know, we track one mystery over the over the course of the of the season. And then at the end of the day, you have a, a sort of a lovely um, hour of network television that you can cut together. So yes, we'll we'll be doing that again. We liked the format. We're keeping it light. You know, it's not a blood and guts show. Mm -hmm. So um, I think people like to go home with this couple and see what's happening in their relationship, just as much as they like to see them out on the street doing what they do, solving, you know, the mysteries. So yeah, I think the tone and the format will stay will stay the same. So what can we look forward to? Any hints as to what we can possibly look forward to in their relationship and the show as a whole? Um, hmm, hint-wise. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, we, I think we've set up some things that'll be interesting. 
we're um, I think there's there's more to be had with Nikki's family um, we'd love to to have the mystery mom um, expose herself a little more we'd love to have back um, Nikki's father who was played by Chris Sarandon if we can get that to happen would be grand um, and uh, in terms of the mysteries you know we have a couple of ideas but I'm not quite ready to reveal that but New Orleans is a very you know spicy gumbo here and there's lots of really fun things to take advantage of that you can't do in other cities and so that's why we're going to really try to keep our stories uniquely New Orleans mm -hmm. and I think that'll help aside from having a a fabulous lesbian couple uh, at the front of the stories I think that will also keep us uh, unique from all the other crime shows yes certainly because I mean although we do have the Fosters now the Fosters is a family drama it's a lovely um, and Orange is a New Black is not exactly crime it's about criminals right so, I mean yeah you do have a very unique niche in talking about Orange is a New Black um, you talked about maybe shopping for somewhere else for a bigger budget and stuff. Um, is Netflix on your radar? It is. Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu are all on our radar. Um, uh, and uh, and with the blessing of Tello, by the way, I should say that you know they're the ones that helped us get this version up. And mm -hmm. um, and if we do not find another outlet, we'll be right back there where we belong. But um, with encouragement from them and always from the beginning, they knew that this was um, hopefully a launching pad to something um, uh, a little more um, on a broader base. So, yes, we're looking at those because, as you said, you know, the show was born from the Internet. It makes perfect sense that it stays on an, on a, on an outlet like that. Those are our first hits, absolutely. Well, what's next? What's next for, you know, the My Life Creative Cloud that you have? I mean, a television series, um, more network shows, or just, you know, focused on getting um, Nikki and Nora out there? Um, I'm always juggling a, a bunch of things at the same time because you never, never know what's going to stick when you throw that spaghetti against the wall. <laughs> so um, it is staffing season, so I'm um, talking to other shows right now about maybe jumping on and, and helping them out and I'm writing two new pilots um, of my own and uh, and those are going I have one finished I have two finished that are going out and one I'm in the middle of writing so um, that season development season all starts again in um, in June and July so I'll have new scripts going out and very different all very all three very different so I'm excited about that well you know there's just uh, one more question before I sure. let you go Sure. Um, now that you've sated our appetite for Nikki and Nora somewhat, yes. um, <laughs> and I say somewhat because we want even more because you're an insatiable writer, um, yes. have you given any thought to the real wish list of all your fans, south of the way, and, you know, is it possible of any kind of reunion, either on TV, the net, movie, anything? For South of Nowhere? Yes. Um, uh, you know what? Sadly, I don't. I'm not optimistic about that. So that's why we're trying to put everybody together in other projects. South of Nowhere is owned by Viacom, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and MTV Networks and Tommy Lynch, and um, you know I was not the creator of that show, so I really have no say over that. And Viacom, we've approached them several times, and right now they have not said anything about even a movie version of it or something which is a shame so sadly it is out of our hands and right now we're sort of having to say we're all we're all moving on to other projects and hopefully we can work together elsewhere um, Tommy and I are always open to if the network would come to us and say hey how about a reboot I actually tried you know a while ago with uh, with our little internet version of it and uh, to try to show them what could be what could be next but right now there's no interest from them and that's that's the heartbreaking part of it is that we we can't control that that's <laughs> why the internet we can control that's what we love <laughs> well I mean speaking from uh, you know a real fan um, even I, I we, at this point in stage I, I think our hopes are you know a little bit of daunting but having the actresses together in any form and any capacity um, will will be just as good so if we right. happen to see them as guest stars or in some other your one of your projects, that will be fabulous. Well, you know, I uh, I gave them all to you in Cowgirl Up, and I, I gave know. 
and I gave Asha to you and Nikki and Nora, and uh, and I'm working on on some other projects to bring them together too. So I promise you, I love them all so much, and I'm trying so hard to get them all together again. All right, this has been so great. Thank you, Nancy. Um, and I wish you all the best, and I really am looking forward to um, NNN Part 2. Great. It's been a pleasure. You too. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.